Revelation chapter 7 verse 1 describes angels holding the four winds of the earth. On behalf of Whitehorse Media, I want to invite you to join us as we learn more about these winds. Welcome back. This is part two of a seven-part series called Wicked Winds, produced by Whitehorse Media. We are looking at winds in the Bible. Uh, the context, the real, really the big picture, is uh, our last program we looked at Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 to 3, where God describes four angels holding the winds of the earth so that they don't blow and cause terrible uh, devastation and they're holding them until the people of God are sealed in their foreheads. So this is part two. We're going to talk about the wind of violence. I'm here with Paul Selko, uh, my associate at Whitehorse Media. Uh, Paul, let's, let's start out with uh, Matthew chapter 24. I think that gives us a good stage, a good it's background, consistent. the words of Jesus to get us into our topic. Okay. So our topic again is violence. And this is talking about the days of Noah. Right. And it says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Right, so in these verses, Jesus is drawing a parallel between Noah's day mm -hmm. and the final days before he comes. Yeah. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. Now here he, he lists what they were doing in Noah's day. Mm -hmm. They were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. But when we go back to Genesis chapter six, it gives us even more information yeah, about what was happening back then. And uh, we need to look at this because I tell you, these things are happening right now all around us. Uh, Genesis is the first book of the Bible. It takes us way back to the beginning of time. Uh, the first two chapters describe God making this world. Uh, in Genesis 1, he made different things. Uh, the first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, mm -hmm. sixth day. He rested on the seventh day. And at the end of uh, Genesis 1, it says, God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. Yes. So the world was perfect. It's kind of hard to, you know, fathom that uh, when you look around us in these days to, to really understand that there was a time when this world was perfect. It was very good. It's far uh, from perfect today, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Uh, we all know that. And it's sad, Paul, that most people don't know that there was a time when the world was perfect. Uh, it didn't, you know, it didn't, we didn't evolve after billions of years mm. from, you know, the time of dinosaurs and then uh, mollusks and then, you know, little little cells mm. getting into bigger cells. And then finally, from the goo, it got to you. You know, that's not the way it happened. It's just the opposite, isn't that's it? Right. We're created perfect and sin degrades That's right, humanity. yeah. Instead of going up, we're going down. Yeah, we're going down. That's right. And, and Genesis 3 describes the fall of man mm. and Adam and Eve and how... They yielded to the temptations, or at least Eve did, uh, the temptation of the serpent in the tree. And that brought sin into the world. And Eve shared the fruit with Adam. He ate the fruit. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a disaster. That's where it all started. And that's Genesis 3. We go to chapter 4. History continues on with the children of Adam and Eve. Uh, and then chapter 5 deals more with the generations uh, that came from Adam and Eve. And then in chapter 6, verse 1, it says, the Bible says, it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men. In other words, those that were in God's line saw those that were in Cain's line. Mm -hmm. uh, they saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. So here we have the godly line, the line of Seth, and, and then the, the Cain line, they're mixing, intermarrying, and then this is resulting in more and more corruption. 
that came upon the earth. Leading to violence. That's right, and that will, uh, and then verse three is very significant. It says, the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. So the Holy Spirit was striving with people. Yeah. He was pleading with people, pleading with people to come back to their relationship with God. And people were silencing their conscience. And this is what was happening in the days of Noah. And we see that happening in our day today too, don't That's we? That's right, we sure do. And it, and it also impresses me that the only way to, to be um, protected from the winds that we're gonna look at more is to listen uh, and to follow the convictions of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And when, we talk, yeah. when it talks about in Revelation that the angels are holding the winds, uh, the Holy Spirit is striving with people, but as humanity goes in the wrong direction and continues to do what it shouldn't be doing, making bad choices, living in sin, uh, and all the fruits of that, then what's happening is the Spirit of God is being withdrawn yeah. from the earth. Right. And that's what is resulting in the angels loosening the winds so there's more evil that's coming upon the world. And God says, my spirit shall not always strive with man. He's, uh, you know, there's coming, there's going to come a day, just like in Noah's day, when the Holy Spirit is going to stop striving. That's right. And those who have listened to the voice of God will be with Jesus on Jesus' side. And those who have rejected the voice of God will be on the side of the devil mm -hmm. and there will, be, there will be no protection for them. Right. And so, you know, that's what we're uh, trying to get a better understanding of. And it says here in verse 11, the earth, it's chapter six, verse 11, the earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. So we can see this pattern happening in our day that Jesus is paralleling with the day of Noah. That That's right. Violence is going to be a big part of the destruction of the winds, the reason for the winds coming in and destroying. That's right. Corruption and violence. And verse 12 says, God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Mm. And then verse 13, God said to Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, mm -hmm. for the earth is filled with violence mm -hmm. through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Mm -hmm. So, uh, even though Jesus in Matthew 24 really only focused on marrying, giving in marriage, eating, drinking, the normal things, and I think his point was people were just living, you know, they thought everything was going on just like normal, but then the flood hit. Mm -hmm. And then he said it's going to be the same uh, at the very end when he comes. But again, he drew a parallel between Noah's day and the final days. So when you go back to Genesis and look more closely at what was, that's right, what was going on back then as men multiplied on the earth and the Holy Spirit was striving but was being withdrawn, uh, one of the key characteristics of that time was a violence. We see that in verse 11 and in verse 13. And do we see that today? We do see that today. We, we see that all over in the world. We see violence. In fact, um, I, I looked up a statistic, Steve, and it says today crime kills more people in America or in the world than even armed conflicts. Many more. In fact, I think the statistic said over a, a, a half a million people were killed from homicide in one year. That's just incredible, Steve, that there's this much violence going on in the world around us. And we see it all, every time you open up the newspaper, or click on your news app, and it's just really sad. That's right, I used to, I actually uh, removed one particular news app from my phone uh, not long ago because, you know, I, I don't want to focus on, I need to know what's going on in the world so that I can talk intelligently about prophecy and world events. Yeah. But enough is enough, and, and I had this one particular app, it was a major news network, and, uh, and I noticed that just, you know, almost every time I clicked and brought it up to learn about the top stories, uh, scrolling down, there was some gory, bloody, violent mm -hmm. story. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I just, I finally decided I don't need to put this in my mind. You don't need to feed on that. That's right. So I, I removed that app and found another app that didn't, <clears throat> that wasn't as bad. And, uh, you know, it's just, you, you read about and see videos on YouTube and clips of mobs uh, storming into um, certain city recently I was watching this whole mob of young people stormed in mm. to uh, different stores they were breaking the glass breaking, they robbing. yeah they were robbing they were carrying out all kinds of you know merchandise and uh, and we just see you know in the, especially in the cities the mm. cities are getting more and more violent yeah. and it's just uh, it's there's just no there's no end to it and some of these stories are just you know, you, you can hardly think about them, mm -hmm. uh, how bad they are. And, and I guess the point is, Paul, that violence was a key characteristic of the days of Noah. Mm -hmm. Jesus said it would be similar uh, before he comes. The angels are holding the winds back while the Holy Spirit is still striving with people. But as people turn away from God uh, and follow the devil, there's going to be more and more uh, of these kind of things, and it's like it's like a wind. It's yes. a wind of destruction mm -hmm. that's blowing through the world. Just like in Bible days, mm -hmm. we talked about in the last program. You know, the winds of destruction that hit Elam, mm -hmm. the winds of destruction that hit Babylon. Babylon. Uh, we can see the wind of destructive violence mm -hmm. going through this world, and and we shouldn't be surprised when we see these things, Steve. The Bible foretells this in, in prophecy and. And we know that these things are coming upon the world. We just need to be ready. Like we talked in the last episode, we need to have our rock, our shelter in the storm. That's right. We? we need to be protected as much as possible. Yeah. Now let's talk about the, uh, the source of violence, the source of, mm, yes. of this evil uh, wind that we can't help but see blowing around us uh, everywhere, okay. it seems. So... That takes us to Ezekiel 28, verse 16. And I'm going to read this verse. Okay. And this is the source of, of the violence in the world. By the multitude of your merchandise, they have filled the midst of you with violence. And you have sinned. Therefore, I will cast you as profane out of the mountain of God. And I will destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. So who so, was the covering cherub? Well, this was Lucifer. Yeah, and and this happened in heaven, didn't it? I mean, already violence was filling his heart, mm -hmm. and when he was cast onto the earth, that violence, that corruption, spread onto mankind very, very rapidly, didn't it? Yep. And we're seeing that happen as mm -hmm. as time progresses. That's right. Yeah, this is a powerful chapter, and it starts really in the section in verse twelve, talking about the king of Tyrus, who was a symbol ultimately of the devil, we know it's not talking about just a man because mm -hmm. verse uh, 13 talks about the day in which he was created, mm -hmm. that he was, uh, he was perfect. Verse 14 talks about he was the anointed cherub, which is a very high angel. Mm -hmm. Verse 15 says you were perfect in your ways mm -hmm. from the day that you were, you were created until unrighteousness was found in you. So this is not talking about a, a normal human being. Right. This is talking about a heavenly being yep. that became corrupt. And as you mentioned in verse uh, 16, uh, one of the things that happened in the midst of him was violence. violence. And that, this is really the, the root of the violence and the, the wind of, uh, of all this killing and murder that we see in different cities and yes. on the news and on YouTube and the things that just you know, turn your stomach. You just mm. think, Lord, how long is this going to go on for? And the good news is it's not going to go on forever. It's not. No, it's not going to go on forever. It's going to put an end to it at some that's point. That's right. Praise his name. And Lucifer is not going to go on forever either. And it's, it's actually, it says in verse 19, uh, verse 18 says, God says, I will, dev I will turn you to ashes mm. upon the earth in the sight of them that behold you. And verse 19 says, all they that know you among the people shall be astonished at you. You shall be a terror and never shall you be anymore. Mm -hmm. And not only is he going to be gone, but the violence that he has brought into God's universe and onto this earth, uh, that's all going to be gone. That's right. You know, Steve, when Jesus was walking the earth, um, he pointed back to Lucifer, Satan, being the source of violence and murder. 
In fact, let's look at that in John chapter 8, verse 44. Here he's giving a rebuke to the people there. He says, you are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. For he was a what? A murderer. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Not only was he a liar, but he invented lying, didn't he? And he invented murder from this violence that sprang up within him. That's right. And it says there is no, no truth in him. Mm -hmm. You know, people are looking at these things, politicians, world leaders, and they're trying to figure out how do we solve these problems? You know, how do we bring peace to the nations? How do we, you know, is it through going green? Is it through, you know, all coming together and having a big in inclusive family where uh, everybody is just accepted no matter what they do? Yeah, there's, only uh, one so there's only one solution. That's right. What that's is the, the truth? truth. That's, that's right, the truth. the truth. And the truth is not in the devil. The truth is in the book. The, the truth book. is in, in the, the word of God. Like verse, 20, right. verse 45, Jesus says, and because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Mm. It's sad that people don't believe Jesus. Yeah. He's the one that tells us the truth. And, yeah. he, and Jesus puts his finger in this verse, as in Ezekiel 28, mm -hmm. on the source yep. of all these problems, on the yep. fountain yep. Of, the, of evil. And that fountain is a supernatural being whose name used to be Lucifer, now he's the devil mm. because he rebelled against God and the violence started with him. And it comes from an absence of truth. An absence of truth. People walking away, in this case Lucifer, walking away from the truth, from the Son of God who is the source of truth. That's right. Now, you, you told me a little bit, a bit ago about uh, a lesson we can learn from, from the time of Jonah. Oh, yes. So why don't, we, uh, why don't we just zero in on that and talk about that briefly? So let's take a look at Jonah, and I'm going to read Jonah 3, verse 8. And to give a quick context about what's going on in Jonah, Jonah was called by the Lord to go to this city, Nineveh, and proclaim the judgment of the Lord against them. And he eventually went, right? We're not going to get into the whole story, right. but he, he ran away and then he, he ended up coming back after a series of events. And he gave the warning. And he had expected that God would complete this judgment and destroy this wicked city. But listen to what the king of Nineveh says after he, he hears this, this uh, proclamation of judgment. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God, yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from the fierce anger that we perish not? So this is incredible, Steve, that this city was known for violence and great violence. That's right. Assyria, and Nineveh, especially with the capital of, of Assyria, Assyria, was very, very, these were violent people. Mm. I mean, they would travel, their armies would travel, they would skin people alive, they did all kinds of cruel things. Uh, this was a very, they were, the Assyrians were very violent people. Yeah, yeah. And now Jonah's giving a message that this city is going to be destroyed mm -hmm. because of its violence. And what does the king do? He repents. Yeah, un he, amazingly. He sits in sackcloth and ashes and he, he commands the whole kingdom to, to repent and turn back to God. And that's an important lesson for us too, Steve, because though violence comes from Satan, it's too late for him to repent. But man, we can still come back to the source of truth, that's right. Good come point. back to the living God, and we can have mercy we can turn away from that and repent of our sin. That's right. No matter how bad we are or no matter what we've done. And if you don't follow God, if you don't follow the Holy Spirit convicting you, you're going to end up on the side of the devil and he's going to compel you to do things yeah, right. that you don't really want to do, right. especially violent things. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the good news is that God still loves us in mm -hmm. spite of this. Yes. And like he loved the Ninevites Praise and he God. gave them an appeal and they listened and they turned from their violence and God, um, he, he forgave them yeah. and he didn't bring his judgments upon them. Let's read that because it's so powerful. Verse 10, and God saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God repented of the evil that he had said he would do to them and he did it not. 
Wow. That's right. So That's hope is available to us all. We just need to make a decision to come back to him and That's seek right. for, for forgiveness. Uh, thinking, speaking of violence, I think about Isaiah 53 mm, yes. and what Jesus went through. And the word violence is right in that chapter. Isaiah 53 is the mighty chapter about the Messiah and what he would suffer, uh, what he would go through. Uh, verse 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. And then it describes the suffering that Jesus went through at the hand of men. And uh, in verse 9, it says, Finally, he would make his grave with the wicked, where he was, he was buried after he was crucified, with the rich in his death. And then it says, Because he had done no violence. Mm neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Jesus never hurt anybody. Yeah. You know, I think about those final scenes in Gethsemane and on the cross when he was arrested and, and beaten and tried and whipped and uh, people spit on him and mocked him and yelled at him and you know, lacerated his back. Uh, Jesus on the cross, he said, Father, forgive, forgive them. them for they know not what they do. Oh. The Bible says he did no violence. He was in the midst of a violent mob, and yet he was uh, peaceful and loving and serene and gentle and compassionate. Uh, praise God, he's, he's, he's my hero. <laughs> he is, and he is the source of truth, right? Jesus is truth. And when you're connected with the Father, you're not gonna have violence, just the opposite of Lucifer. When he had the absence of the truth in him, it led to violence within him. So. That's right. Well, in contrast to violence, uh, what does the Holy Spirit really lead us to do uh, and to be like? It's, it's in Galatians chapter 5. And Galatians. many people know these verses well, but they're very, very relevant to us today. Uh, Galatians 5, actually verses 19 and t to 21 talks about people who follow the flesh, the ways of the flesh. Okay. Uh, it talks about in, in verse 21 about wrath and strife. Um, it also talks about hatred. Mm -hmm. And in verse 21 about murder, drunkenness, uh, and such like of which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. like the people of Noah's day. But verse 22 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and long-suffering or um, patience and gentleness and goodness and faith and meekness and self-control. Mm. These are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I mean, these are the opposite of violence to you, right? That's right, the opposite of violence. They're the opposite of the devil. Yeah, and yeah. so, you know, we can expect, sadly, that as we look at this world and as the angels are loosening the winds, like in Noah's day, uh, before the water came down finally, uh, in these last days, they're, they're loosing the winds. And then, you know, we can see the fruit of the devil, the fruit of his kingdom mm. all around us and the violence and the hatred. Yeah. That's right. But God is calling us to repent. He's calling us away from these things. He's calling us to a different life. Yes. Not that kind of life, yes. but a life of yielding to the Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, we can just praise God that he's given us hope. Because sometimes, you know, people don't, they, they lose hope. They, they look at all these terrible things around and they just throw up their hands and they say, you know, there's no hope. There's no hope. What can I do to make the situation better? Well, we're responsible for our own situation, right? For our own actions, I guess you might say. And if we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us and change us, we can have the fruits of the Spirit just like this. And we can have that peace. That's found only through Jesus Christ. That's right. And that's what Noah found. It says in Genesis that Noah uh, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Yes. And we just want to, you know, encourage people that there's nothing more important in their lives than to seek the Lord and to pray for the Holy Spirit. Paul, I remember years ago, I went through a terrible crisis in my life and the Spirit of God was striving with me. And I... Um, 
heard that still small voice inside my head that said, basically said, pray for the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was in uh, San Francisco or south of San Francisco in an apartment in uh, Pacifica where I lived by myself before I got married when I was a young pastor. And uh, I was going through a real struggle and I turned off the lights and I got on my knees and I prayed a prayer, God help me, help me to, to get out of this confusion that I'm, I'm going through and this, the Holy Spirit just impressed my conscience. Pray for the Holy Spirit, pray for the Spirit. God is striving with you, don't give up, don't, don't lose your faith. And I started doing that. And uh, that was in 1986. And how many years is that? Um, almost 37 years. That's a long time. I have been praying for the Holy Spirit and uh, the Lord has changed my life and he's given me love, joy, peace. Uh, I see the violence around me. I see it on my, on my apps, on my phone. Uh, thank God that we live in North Idaho where we have a, a break from- A little bit sheltered here. No, yeah, no. compared to you know some of the bigger cities yeah. where the mobs are active and the crime is yeah, it's, off it's the so charts. It's so sad to, to watch it happen, but we know it, it's happening. We know it's going to continue to happen. That's right. Until Jesus comes back. It's a wind, Paul. It's one of the winds described in the book of Revelation the wind of, of violence. Just like Noah's day, it's happening now. But the good news is that this violence is not going to go on forever. Uh, we're not going to be, you know, exposed to these things. Our families won't be in danger. Your life won't be in danger. Uh, like it says in, I think it's 1 Timothy 3 that says in the last days, perilous times will come. We see these perilous times, but God is calling us to turn from sin, to give up the devil, get up his, give up his evil ways, and pray for the Holy Spirit, come to Jesus so we can have love and joy and peace in our lives as we wait for the big day when Jesus will get rid of sin. We hope you've been blessed by this White Horse Media production. To support White Horse Media, please call us at 1-800-78-BIBLE. That's 1-800-782-4253. You may also send your donations by mail to White Horse Media, P.O. Box 130, Priest River, Idaho, 83856, or donate online at whitehorsemedia.com. And now for some breaking news. White Horse Media has just launched its new free online Bible school, Thunder in the Holy Land filmed in Israel to help you and others discover the true teachings of God's Word. Jesus is coming soon and a wonderful adventure awaits those who embark on this journey. Time is so short and God's Word is needed as never before. To learn more, visit WhitehorseMediaBibleSchool.com. That's WhitehorseMediaBibleSchool.com. You'll be glad you did. We hope you enjoyed this video. Before you go, check out these wonderful books for sharing. The Truth About the Sabbath is packed with information for anyone wanting to understand the Sabbath subject. Also, the 666 Beast Identified. What it means to you identifies both the beast and his strange number 666. What do the beast and his number have to do with you? Both are available in paperback and ebook versions from White Horse Media.